welcome Congressman Will Hurd. Howdy, Iowa. My name is Will Hurd, and I'm from Texas. This is my first trip to Iowa, and if there's one thing you need to know about me or one thing that I hope you take home remembering about Will Hurd is I think America is the greatest country on earth, and we're better together. I'd love to share one quick story so you all to understand where I come from. It's about my parents. My mother, Mary Alice Hurd, may she rest in peace, is white. My father, Bob Hurd, is black. They met in Los Angeles in 1969. A year later, they got married and moved to San Antonio, Texas in 1971. It was not in vogue to be an interracial couple in South Texas in 1971. My father was a traveling salesman. He sold notions. That's an old-timey word for zippers, buttons, and threads. And he was gone Monday through Friday. And after my parents had three kids, I'm the baby of three, by the way, they decided to buy a home. There was only one neighborhood in San Antonio, Texas, that would sell to an interracial couple. It wasn't the neighborhood with the best schools. It wasn't a neighborhood that had the best resources. But my mother and father and their devotion and love to one another brought up three kids and 35 years later, their youngest son became the representative for that community. America hasn't always been perfect, but we're always trying to get better. And we live in incredibly complicated and dangerous times, and we need common sense leadership to solve these problems. Too many Americans today are having to work harder and longer, not to get ahead, but to stay where they are. We're not giving our kids the tools for them to be competitive with their peers in other parts of the world. As someone who represented over 800 miles of the border when I was in Congress, my district was the size of the state of Georgia. It took 10 hours to drive across my district at 80 miles an hour. That was the speed limit in most of the district, but I learned the hard way it's not the speed limit in all of the districts. Sorry, General. Um, and I realized that's not the speed limit driving back from Waterloo to Des Moines either. So um, I don't have to tell you all how bad the border is. We can't even do a basic responsibility of the government. And we are in a new Cold War with the Chinese Communist Party. The Chinese Communist Party is trying to surpass the United States of America as a global superpower. This is not my opinion. This is not things I learned when I was overseas in the CIA. This is what the Chinese government has said about themselves in English since at least 2015. Why should we care? Because if they win this new Cold War, it's going to affect all of us. Our salaries are not going to go as far. Our kids are not going to be able to have some of the best paying jobs in the world. It is going to impact a quality of life that is the envy of everybody else in the world. And that's why we're going to need common sense leadership, a lot like the leadership that y'all have here in Iowa. Thanks for having me, and I'm looking forward to the conversation. Well. Thank you, Congressman Hurd. We are so glad to welcome you to Iowa. And just as we look out over this room, I want you to know, without the people in this room, everywhere I look, I see another person that was a key part of our campaign, our victories last fall. It wouldn't have happened without the people here in this room. So we are blessed to have you here today. Thank well, give you. yourself a round of applause, Iowa. Come on. 
Well, and here in Iowa, we have had some big things happening this year. Uh, thanks to Governor Reynolds' leadership and our legislators, uh, there is now more parental voice and control in our education. Uh, what can we do at the federal level to make sure every parent in America has that same voice and control when it comes to something as important as their kids' education? Look, it starts, we have to win. The GOP has to win. I don't have to tell you all these stats, you know them well. You can clap for winning, yes. <laughs> We've lost seven of the last eight popular elections. We lost the House in 2018. We lost the Senate and the White House in 2020. And we, lost, we did not take the House back with a big enough margin as what we should have or had expected. We have to start winning. And here's the reality. Independents and Democrats are sick and tired of the direction the country is going to. We have that opportunity. And guess what? Y'all learned that here in Iowa. We, I know who you beat. You know, nobody thought you were going to have that chance. So what did you do? You know, you went to communities that had never seen a Republican. You took conservative values to places that hadn't seen it. It's easy to preach to the choir. But we have to take that message to different communities, and it's an opportunity, and it's something that I saw. Nobody thought that a black Republican was going to win in a 72% Latino district. But I went to places that had never seen a Republican, and here's what I learned. Whether you're in a ruby red town or a deep blue city, people cared about the same issues. They wanted to put food on their table, a roof over their head and make sure the people that they love are healthy, happy, and safe. And they want common sense leadership to these issues. We talk about schools and school choice. Congratulations on doing this. This is something in Texas we've had for some time and there's been a 20 year longitudinal study on the issue of school choice. Black and brown kids that go to, to, to charter schools, there is no achievement gap with their other kids. That's over 20 years. And that is why this is a message we're taking to communities that traditionally don't believe in the GOP. And so we re it requires us to have leaders that are willing to go and stand up for our principles and talk about these issues. Congressman, welcome to the Hawkeye State. We're first in the nation where you will get a fair hearing with some great questions from our folks. But um, there's many in this room, myself included, that, that see religious liberty as the undergirding of everything, of, of freedom. What can you, what can leaders do at this point to make sure we continue the fight against the woke left and positively advocate for religious liberty? Sure. Um, so. I spent a decade straight out of university as an undercover officer overseas in the CIA. My job was to stop terrorists from blowing up our homeland, prevent Russian spies from stealing our secrets, and stopping nuclear weapons proliferators from getting a dirty bomb into our country. It was an honor to serve my country for a decade in some dangerous places. I lived in India for two years, Pakistan for two years, Afghanistan for a year and a half. And here is one of the things that I saw. I saw people in those countries fighting for that religious liberty that we have here in the United States. Um, I saw the impact that that has on a government and a population by not having that kind of access. And so, so I saw this up close and personal and seeing people really toiling uh, for, for, this, for this right. And I also think, um, you know, I, when I first ran for office, um, I was criticized because I thought our churches and synagogues should do more to help with some of these intractable issues that we've been dealing with, like homelessness. Like, yeah, these, the, the churches are better set up to not just give somebody a fish, but to teach them how to fish. How to address kids in schools 
that don't have access to meals. Right? These are, these are the, the realities and how we should have a partnership and working forward. And it goes back to the only way we have that is to have the leaders that understand uh, these issues in Washington, D.C. and is taking a, play, uh, a page out of your playbook in winning in tough races like y'all did here in Iowa. Thank you for your answer and your service. Well, and you have really been a leader in the national security area. Could you tell us a little bit about some of the threats on the world stage right now and what that means for us here in Iowa? Y'all are starting to read about the decoupling of the dollar from many countries exchanging, doing a currency exchange not in dollar accounts. Why does that matter to all of us? It matters because it, it impacts our ability to have a large quality of life. After World War II, the United States of America became, became a superpower in the middle of World War I. But we started acting like a superpower at the end of World War II when instead of taking from Europe, we gave them a helping hand. And we built an international order that benefited us. Having a, the largest trading partner in the world that was rebuilt after World War II, that benefited us. And so the Chinese understand that. And they've seen how we've used some of our financial tools to push Russia aside. And they want to make sure that that doesn't happen to them when they decide to invade Ukraine. And why should Iowa care about that? If you think inflation is bad now, if you think supply chain issues are bad now, if you think it's hard to get a car, a phone, a TV, or a refrigerator is bad now, if China invades Taiwan, they're going to corner the market on about 70% of, of advanced semiconductor manufacturing. Why do we care about semiconductors? They are the building blocks of every piece of new technology. And so let's not make the same mistakes that we made in Ukraine. We should have helped Ukraine in 2008, in 2009, in 2010. And we should be helping countries like Taiwan now because it impacts our quality of life. And I want to make sure that the rest of this century stays the American century. Congressman, our time together is up. It was a true honor.